What's up guys, Tevin here, back again with another episode of Let's Play Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. In the last episode we got the final Crystal Star and now we are at the Thousand Year Door to race after Grotus and Princess Peach who apparently already went through the door but that doesn't seem right since it can't open until all seven stars are assembled and placed at the altar. What kept you Mario? Well it doesn't matter now, it, I don't think they're in the vicinity anymore. They must have found another way to get through the door. All right, well, let's go ahead and do our thing. It's all come down to this. Hurry now, Mario. Hold aloft the last crystal star. door At long last, the entrance to the Palace of Shadow has been opened! Before Princess Peach falls victim to that fiend, before he takes over the world, you must rescue the princess and stop this cataclysm. Come on, Mario. Alright, with that, let's head into the final chapter. Welcome to Chapter 8, The Thousand Year Door. So yep, the penultimate chapter is the name of the game, as one should expect, given this has been our goal the entire time. And it's all going to take place inside the Palace of Shadows. Or really just Shadow, I don't have to add the extra S at the end. Ugh, this place is freaky, but we don't know how to- we don't have a choice, Mario. We gotta get in there and save Princess Peach before this gets out of hand. Come on, Mario. Yeah. Alright, so as always, guys, please let me know your days going down in the comments system below as we make our way through the last chapter of this game. It's been a long time coming. It definitely feels like it's been longer, given how long ago I've had all these recorded, and now I'm just now finally getting to the end of this game. So first and foremost, go ahead and see what I have equipped right now. Um, I put on some more classic ones, got rid of the FP plus badge, instead put on the flower saver and spike shield because I did level up a little bit off screen. Um, I don't fully recall how much, but um, I think I did upgrade my BP. Actually no, because I would have kept the clip of it if I did. For the most part, I'm trying to prioritize making sure that my stats are like at an even level right now. That way, when it comes to the final boss, I have a lot more options of what I can and can't do. And I got some new enemies, so that's the Swoopula, an airborne blood sucking bat like thing. Max HP is 8, attack is 9, defense is 0. Uh, yeah, no. It's the exact same thing as a Swooper, however, just powered up and palette swap, like most enemies in this game tend to be once you get the later chapters. And you're trying to throw a blue sheet, so I'll gladly take that. I don't know when I'll actually use it, but it will be useful nonetheless once I actually get to a boss that might give me some trouble. Because I believe in this one, there's a bunch of mini-bosses. All together, if I hack the top of my head, I think there's like four? There's... and... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's just... Th nope, nope, almost forgot about you. Okay, yeah, there are four mini-bosses in the final boss. Anyway, all we're really doing is going down here from here, and since we already got the Swoopula in our little catalog, I don't have to fight it again, so we won't be seeing that one anymore unless there's a new enemy in here. And for the most part, a lot of the enemies that you find in this chapter will kind of be reminiscent for the ones that we have fought leading up to here, just a more powered up version of it. I think all the other like probably two new enemies in here. Oh cool, got a shooting star, that'll be helpful. Yeah, there's only two new enemies here. 
and I don't think we'll fight them until close towards the end. And I believe these are the actual dry bones that we are more familiar with in the Mario series. Yep. Because before we were fighting dull bones in Hook Death Castle. So that's a dry bones, the form of Koopa whose spirit animates its bones. Eek, that's so freaky. Max HP is 8, attack is 5, and defense is 2. When its HP goes to 0, it will collapse into a pile, but it will eventually rise again. Fire explosions will put a permanent end to it by getting it back up. The dry bones will sometimes build friends if it feels outnumbered. If you don't take them all out close together, they'll just keep coming back. Let's wipe them all out for good once and quick, and thanks. Oh my god. Don't know why. I, I like literally space it out. Like, I read it in my mind while I'm recording it, and then when it comes time to actually like go ahead and do the voiceover, it's like, alright, I'm reading a lot slower than what I was imagining when I was actually recording it. So, just like with the dull bones, we have to beat them within close succession of each other, otherwise we'll just keep coming back up. And they don't really give that much experience, at least based around what level you are as you're coming into here. Because if you're decently high level, then just like all the other enemies, they'll start to like downgrade how much star points they give you. And if you can memorize that sound that we just heard, there is a billet blaster somewhere in here that we're going to have to go against. But this time they're gold, so that's even better. It means you're going to hit harder and they're going to take a lot more damage. It also means I need to tattle them to get them in the log. So while we got this one here, let's go ahead and enter this one in. Alright, so that's a bombshell bill. B build blasters shoot these things repeatedly. Max HP is 3, attack is 6, and defense is 2. Its attack is high, but its HP is low, so take it out before it takes you out. And then again, if you focus on these guys, you'll never win. Smack that B blast bill blaster. Yeah, no, I don't like the abbreviation for this, because I always get mixed up with what it's actually trying to be called. But the bombshell bill blasters are just a gold version of the bill blasters that we've come to fight against back in chapter 5. Yeah, back in chapter 5 when we first got introduced to them. And now we just gotta keep making our way over to them so we can actually attack the source of the problem so we don't have to worry about it again until later on. And of course that means I'm gonna have to tattle these guys too. I wanna say their attack is just as high. Actually, no, it's not. So that's the B-Blue Blaster that fires bombshell bills. Sorry about the abbreviation. Yeah, thanks. Max HP is 10, attack is 4, or defense is 4. It's really, really tough. Yeah, hard to hurt this guy. Thing is, if you don't take it out, it'll keep shooting bombshell bills at you, so you gotta figure out a way to beat it and fast. Okay, so they don't actually have an attack set, probably because they send out the B-Bill Blasters to actually do the attacking for them. So, their attack is still, probably still on 9. This is that their attack can also attack us separately, if that makes sense. And just like before, they can be either um, elevated or near ground level, which means some partners can attack them while others can't. And I mainly want to switch out the Bobbery just because he has a higher attack stat than most of our partners. And because if I were to use his... I forget what it's called. It's like... the bo Nope, I don't even remember what it's called now. If we use his final skill, which attacks like the whole group, I think it does kind of get through defense points a little bit. But I might be wrong about that because I have not played this in a good while. And my memory on this part is kind of foggy since it's always the later part of the game. And you tend to remember eh, tend to remember the earlier parts a lot more clearly than the like later parts for some reason. Probably because you like see it a whole lot more often than you do the final parts. But we managed to take out one, so let's go ahead and focus on attacking the back one so we can actually end this fight. And if we just keep on attacking the B blasters as they're coming over here, we're never gonna get anything done. So Koop should be able to get rid of them while they're on the ground. Alright, cool. So I was enough to take them out, but I can only do one damage to them, and he still keep on making... Actually, no. This will be fine, because he only got one HP left, so if I can just take this thing out, then all I have to do is worry about them, and they'll probably self-destruct trying to kill me, so it won't even matter. And there's a simple power shell, enough to get rid of them, and now we don't have to fight... You guys don't have to see me fight them again. I still have to fight them in-game and cut it all out for you later on. And I'm not going to waste a chance to collect all these coins, even though we're at the later end of the game and we don't really need them anymore. It's still nice to have. Oh, and of course we got the spikes to deal with. Oh my god. I should have avoided that, but I want this badge. 
So I need Coops to grab it for me. There we go. Got the all or nothing badge. Ugh, I'm never going to put that on just because I am not 100% confident in my action command skills. So why leave it up to chance if I can like power up my moves without it being like, you got to make it otherwise. If you don't, then it's just not going to do any damage, period. So while we are trying to inch through here slowly, I'm trying to avoid activating the spike traps because there's a hidden pathway you have to follow in order to actually get through here as evident by the spikes that shoot up for you at random parts depending on where you go because they're kind of like pointing you in the direction you need to go so obviously you can't go to the middle can't go to the bottom so just have to go around the top and get to this door and that's how a lot of the areas in this particular chapter is like they're more like puzzles to actually get through it even though that's kind of what we've been doing so far these ones are a lot more hostile than others and of course we got fire bars again and if we let's see what chapter was it that i think that was also in chapter five um if you jump over them repeatedly um they'll eventually pick up speed but they'll also destroy i don't want to say destroy themselves but they'll disappear and give you some coins by doing it too but you have to do it perfectly otherwise if you get hit once by them then they'll just disappear i'm sorry no they'll reset their pattern so you have to do it all over again and I'm not even reading this one right now, but this is the Phantom Ember, pretty much just like the Lava Bubbles and Embers that we faced back in Chapter 5 as well. Just a more powered up version and, you know, a little bit stronger. I believe if you have the Ice Power Badge while you're attacking these guys, like I have on right now, you'll deal more damage to them just like what we did with prior enemies. Hence why I had that equipped at the very beginning of this chapter, because I knew they were coming and that's annoying get hit once by these things and they send you all the way back to the beginning. So now I gotta make my way back over there because I unmistakably got hit because of an enemy encounter that I couldn't really skip. And for this section gotta get into the tube form and kind of just hop our way over there and roll underneath the high ones and it gets annoying once you get to that part of the bridge because you don't know if they're gonna come or not. So it could just pop out of nowhere. And I think we're at our first mini boss because I don't think there's anything hit. Yep, this is the first mini boss. And it's very reminiscent of what we face in Hooktail's Castle. Lug, blurg, none shall pass by. Let those who disturb her sleep fall into the depths of endless darkness. So it's a lot like how we did back in Hooktail's Castle. So we just gotta make our way over there once they stop pushing us and just run into him to actually get into the fight. Just like that one, you can't really do a first encounter. All you can really do is just make your way over there and then initiate the fight. And someone is yelling outside for some reason. Don't know why, but I don't care. Alright, so we already got Dry Bones initiated. Let's go ahead and get the Dark Bones logged in. Alright, so that's a Dark Bones. It's the baddest of the Bones gang. Max SP is 20, attack is 5, and defense is 2. When its HP goes down to 0, it will collapse into a pile, but it will eventually rise again. Fire and explosions will put a permanent end to it, getting it ah, getting it back up though. Its HP is so high, so it's hard to take it down. I mean, it's not that high. Like any other bones, it sometimes builds friends if it feels outnumbered. It's a pretty tough enemy, you better take it out and its buddies once and for all. So for the most part, we're going to focus primarily on attacking him, while the other ones, I kind of want to take them closer out towards when he's getting low just because they won't take as much effort but he will. Hence why I have Vivian out because she can attack a whole group of enemies and with her fire attacks when they go down they're not getting back up. However they do deal a lot of damage even when you block it properly. Go ahead and use Fiery Jinx so we can attack the whole group. And with that residual fire damage I'll actually take them out and good it'll last long enough to actually kill them. So now let's focus on him, get him lower, that way it can actually affect all of them at once. Although, at this rate, they're probably going to kill Vivian. Very good, yeah, attack me instead. Okay, don't attack me that much. Alright, uh, go ahead and swap you out for Bobbery, because Explosion will do just as nice. And I can get rid of you early. Wouldn't really matter. Oh, that sucks. It put out the fire on them. At least the back one will be gone. Um, 
Okay, I guess I'll use a stopwatch. Honestly. Oh, and it didn't even work, at least not all of them, but it worked on the one that got frozen. This was such an easy fight that was going my way so well until that last second is like, alright, put you out, and then we'll keep the other ones alive. So essentially now, we've only taken care of one of them, even though we killed three at this point, and ugh, my voice. <clears throat> Hopefully this will be enough to take them all out. Almost, but it took out the Dark Bones, which was really matters. And cool, that one got frozen, so all we have to do is just take out his last two HP points, and then we're done. Nothing to it. Getting close to another level, but that'll probably be it for this video. So, thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Paper Mario Thousand Your Door. In the next episode, we'll continue exploring the Palace of Shadows and try to find Princess Peach. So, until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. So, take care, everyone.